Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Saga Frontier. So, I did do a little bit of grinding here in Shrike. Um, you may notice that Riki is now much higher level. He also is a Gaia Toad. Uh, he's got a whole list of abilities that I've picked up, and I'll go over more into monsters later, but right now let's just say that he is quite powerful for what stage of the game we're at. Uh, loot, I'm probably going to end up going melee with him. Um, decided to go uh, like for wrestling moves. That may be a bad idea, but uh, we'll see. Um, I'm going to have Maylene go gun. Uh, she's going to still keep on Sunray and Starlight Heal, mostly Starlight Heal for a while. Uh, Blue has picked up um, Darkseer. And something I want to point out is the mastering. So if you have, out of your eight abilities that you can equip, if you have six of them the same type, be they physical or magical, you master them. You see the little crown right there? Um, when mastered, any ability that... Basically, all abilities cost one point less, uh, be it JP for magic or WP for weapons. And that means that all his his two ones here, power grab and energy chain, are both um, flat zeros. So I can use them all the time I want. Uh, and that even implosion only costs two, and psycho armor costs one, etc. So that's why it's best to go for all of one type. If you mix and match, like what. Um, I have right here. You will never master it unless they've changed that, of course. It is possible they've changed it. But I'm going to assume they haven't. Now, monsters and machines don't have that. Uh, neither do mystics. Uh, Mystic is another type of uh, character, and we will get into that when we get to mystics. Um, it also occurs to me that I never got into uh, like the specifics of what each character, uh, what each race does, so how humans work, I like Blue here. And that's what I'm going to focus on, is the type of character that my main character is. Blue is a human. As a human, what he does is, as you fight, as you do things in battle, uh, based on the actions you select in battle, you have a chance of gaining those stats. Um, and if you take damage, you have a chance of getting HP. Uh, JP and JP, I think, stands for like Jutsu points or something like that. Uh, Japanese for like technique points, if I recall correctly. I could be way off, but regardless, JP is magic. What we would mostly see as MP. WP is weapon points or weapon power, um, and that is how you use weapon skills. Like in say Loot's case. His uh, tumble requires WP, whereas Shadow Net requires JP. Now you see also the LP there, and this is something that I didn't go over necessarily, but you probably noticed, but I want to go over the basics here. HP is obvious, hit points, health points, whatever, it's the basis of your character being alive or dead, um, or unconscious. When your character is knocked unconscious, they lose a single LP. Now. LP is a used to be a permadeath thing. Um, basically, if you run out of LP on any character other than your main character, they go comatose. Uh, I read up on this game uh, in the hang on, let me see in the config. You have the help menu. Found this just looking, and one of these actually explains that uh, ailments. Yeah, here it is. Uh, and see so the comatose. HP and LP are zero. Character is unable to take any action. They're not dead and can be revived. That is not the case in the original. In the original, they were just outright dead. If I recall. I never... Okay, see, I never... If there was a way to revive them, I never found it. Um... <laughs> but yeah, so knockout is what happens when you hit zero HP. You can still heal them. Um... But... And they will revive, unlike... Unlike in games like, say, Final Fantasy, you don't have to have a specific ability to revive a character who's at zero HP. They just... Yeah, you, you have to actually heal them. 
um, and have a healing uh, be enough to, for them to hopefully not get killed instantly. Um, so that's the biggest thing is with Blue, he does not start with any WP and never go physical with him. Like, he just does not have the physical prowess. You see, his strength only 14, his vitality is 13. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Also, side note, I'm pretty sure that I'm allergic to something in my room that I haven't figured out what it is. Um, anywho. So, mobility is your agility, your ability to evade, and I believe it also goes into uh, who goes first. Intelligence uh, actually has a breakdown of this. Hold up. This is something I knew in the original. I keep going to that. Here we are. But it's good to see an actual, like, full-on explanation of the stats. Um, of course, like I said, with mobility, it doesn't show that it's in um, who goes first. But in my experience, the characters with the higher mobility usually go first in, uh, in turn order. So strength is physical. Uh, intelligence is is for magic. Both acquisition and mechs. We'll get into mechs later. Concentration is for sword and gun. Psychic is basically your protection against statuses. Vitality is damage taken and resistance to sleep. Charisma is, yeah, the charm attacks. Charm is a very specific uh, type of attack, and they can be dangerous. So, um... Defense, oh crap. Defense is obvious. Indicator. Oh, that's the, uh, the indicator is the, um, the thing that I told you about, the crown. So, yeah, becoming a master decreases WP or JP. It's not and. Um, sometimes it's poorly worded. But yeah, so that's the uh, basics of the game. I'm sorry to have uh, not done that in the first episode. Anyway, <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt a, to see, basically, this is a on-screen kind of, I wonder if this works still thing. So I'm buying repair kits. And... This is the... I'm going to buy about 20. I probably need more, but we'll do 20. Uh, I don't think this is going to work, but I have to try. I have to try. Um, and I wanted to try on screen. I was going to do it off screen while grinding. I'm like, you know what? I want to record whether this works or not. I don't want to... I want to have my genuine reaction as to whether it works or not. So we're going to go to Scrap. Uh, is that scrap? That is scrap. Okay. Maybe? Sorry, I was trying to figure out what I was allergic to was this candle I have, but it didn't trigger a reaction. I don't know. I'm kind of concerned, to be honest with you. Anyway, this is the scrap junk shop. So, how this works, you can't get in without paying. Yeah. Um how this works is you come here to the guy that's the counter, you tell him that you're buying. Okay, 600 credits. Do I have... I don't have enough money. Alright then. Hold up while I go get more money. You find me back here. I wanted to kind of show this off. This is the Bio Research Laboratory. Um, this area gets pretty tough, but I wanted to show off what I've been doing. What I've been fighting to really get stronger. And how this game works is basically, let me slow it down a little bit. Um, the game actually has, let me put them in the back. I wonder if there's a light way to say that. Hello, Riki being giant type. Um, okay, I can't start with that, but I can hit those two if I hit that. Um, I'm sorry, I'm mumbling to myself here. So I can't. Uh, just instantly get credits. I'm afraid credits are going to be a little bit harder for me to get a hold of. Um, <clears throat> but hopefully, a oh, nice combo. Hopefully, I'll be able to get the kind of credits pretty quickly. So the way combos work is simply having a combo active lowers the enemy's resistance to its set, to its damage, allowing it to do some pretty decent numbers. Normally, Energy Chain only does like 300 and 500 because Stunning Shot hit hit first as a combo. Um, combos get even more impressive when you start comboing a lot more attacks together. 
Um, and that's one of the things I love about Stunning Shot is it does combo with a lot of things, and it opens up a, a lot of possibilities. Also, Ultrasonic Wave is incredibly powerful, and the thing I had to fight to get it was not really worth it. But hey, we'll end up seeing it later, don't worry. Again, I will explain more of the monster thing uh, when we get to Riki's story, but this is kind of how it works, just a quick overview. You pick a monster, uh, pick a bird, and then you pick a... If you have too many techniques, you can pick a move to get rid of. Um, in this case, I'm going to try to get rid of that. And I got Beak. And I think that was a downgrade? That may have been an upgrade, actually, looking at it. Maybe the other skeleton. We'll see. And that's... That's how that goes. But you see, I need 600 credits, and I only got a couple. But, uh, so I'm gonna be here a little bit. Thank the Lord for the increased speed, though. You know how I said the thing I had to fight for the, uh, the ultrasonic waves wasn't worth it? Yeah, that's this thing. Fortunately, Ghost Rider is not immune to his own attack, and can be dealt a fair amount of damage from it. And goodbye. Yeah. T260 is kind of a liability. Kind of the reason why I uh, am trying to use the Junk Shot. Again, we'll get more into that when that happens. But yeah, I just want to show him off because I mentioned him in the last uh, battle. And let's see if we can... Here, let's see if we're going to be... Okay, let's anything. Okay, we tried. See if anyone learns anything. Nope, okay. Well, see when I have money. Alright, and you find me back here in Scrap again with the titular 600 credits. This is going to be a little bit of a waste if it doesn't work, but we're going to try it anyway. So 600 credits for three items. Pay cash in advance, pick what you want, okay? Get inside and get what you want. So, the way this works is there's multiple boxes in here. And there are one, there's one here. Junk armor. And don't need this one for now. So you have junk armor, you have junk armor. There are different head pe uh, like, well, I think that's body and suits. This is, I think, helmets. Uh, we're gonna come all the way back here, because this should be just the weapons. Yes, sword. Okay, so it's really junk. So it's random what you get. That was a knife, Kukiri. And that was a repair kit. So now we've chased our three, and we can't, can't choose anymore. All right. Now, we go into selling. And this is, so the way this works is that you have, these. they take these items back. The Hyperion Rifle is, or the Hyperion Cannon, whatever it is called, is really powerful. But why you'd want to sell it for 10,000 credits or otherwise, I don't know. Now that, you know, gave me an error message when I clicked it. However, if they did not remove the cheat, oh my god, it's still in the game. Oh, wow. They didn't fix that? I wonder if they're going to fix that later. Because that would be hilarious if it is, if they do. And maybe it's intentional. Maybe it is intentional. Maybe it's not a glitch. But then not taking out for the remaster, that is... It's a good possibility it's more of an easter egg than a glitch. So, what I just did is... Because I can get in here, you have to pay to get in here. Then once you've paid, you can get in here as long as you don't leave the room. Um, and you can come back and get more items because I attempted to sell a Hyperion Cannon even though I don't have one. Um, oh my god, I can't believe that worked. So, I'm only going to do this for a short time on camera, but this is, this is a good way of getting money, essentially. Because there will be, uh, items that we can sell. So, the reason I bought the repair kits on camera is because something that apparently happens is and it's an interesting idea the way it's designed to work is based on your total HP of your party I believe it is is based on the game this is what creates the game's difficulty level based on your difficulty level is the starting price uh, 300 is the most the least I've seen so the way it works is you sell them repair kits and the junk gets better um, and the idea was I guess to reward you for with free attempts at the the I guess lottery you might say for selling the higher items that's what was always thought but since it's even in the remake I, they've added a whole other K 
character to the game, although it's not available at the start. I'm assuming it's only available uh, at the end. But they added a hold of the character and fixed a lot of problems people have with the game and left this in. And it makes me wonder if it's intentional or not. So I'm going to do is I'm just going to sell a few repair kits at a time. Um, and I'm trying to get this to where it upgrades, because right now I'm getting Kikiris and Broadswords, and that's not too big of an difference. Uh, sorry, fighting back a cough. Sometimes you do find repair kits. There's one key difference to that. There's one character that does not. Okay, there's the Bowie Knife that I actually started off with, so... Or, well, that, that uh... Loot started off with. Alright, I'm gonna, um, pause recording and keep going, and I'll show you whenever they upgrade again, basically. I'll tell you what, it's really nice that, uh, they have a, a speed-up thing here. Uh, just wanted to let you know that. Um, I'm still getting laser knives, but I'm also getting some others. I'm wondering if it'll spawn in. It's not. Okay, not fine. Yeah, the, uh, speed-up on this game is really fast. In battle, like, it's two times speed. So this is, this is two times speed. Faster than what the game, oh, hello. I don't need that jump gun now. And then this is three times speed. Laser knife. Repair kit. I don't know what they're going to call the one that I'm looking for, because the one that I'm looking for that lets me know that I'm getting close used to be called, like, OSC sword. I don't know what that actually stood for, to be honest with you. So, and they've done enough name changes that I'm just looking for something that stands out, basically. Samurai Sword. Samurai Sword was the next highest. It's not the highest. Zweihinder, I, I've seen Zweihinder a couple of times. I don't think that's the one I'm looking for. I should know the stats of the one I'm looking for, actually. Let me see. I'm going to just show here. So, a Ceramic Sword. Ceramic Sword is close. I don't think it's Ceramic Sword. I think it's the one right above Ceramic Sword, actually. No, it could be ceramic, but I don't think it is. Yeah, and since I'm getting repair kits, I can slowly repair everything in here. So, when I find that other sword, the sword that stands out, I will come back again. There's another ceramic one. So yeah, I'll come back again in a moment. Okay, I have discovered that they have decided to call it the High Frequency Sword. I'm pretty sure that that's the one that we want to farm up as many as we can of. Um, <clears throat> I didn't get any uh, repair kits that time, but yeah. High frequency sword. That's the one we're looking for. Um, offhand, I couldn't tell you how many it's going to take. But... The idea... There's a little idea I'm going for, and I'm gonna probably going to... Uh, while I'm doing my... Oh, God, I almost left. That's a bad thing. Don't ever leave while you're in the middle of this. Now, granted, I've made enough money I could start it again. I'd rather not, considering I'm pretty sure everything downgrades again. But... Yeah. So this is what I'm going to be doing. This is this is another form of grinding. Um, and this is only the, sec the first money trick. There are two money tricks in the original, and if this one's in, I'm going to cross my fingers that the other one is in as well. And that one's far more lucrative, but you have to have enough money to get started with that one. Oh, there's another high frequency. So, as you build up the the, uh, the power of these items, uh, these other items also start getting pretty good too. Um, like we take the jumpsuit, jumpsuit's okay. Uh, I think this was a gun. Hey, gun? Gun? Yeah, there's a gun. And that was a repair kit. A uh, lightning cannon. That's actually not a bad idea. And this is... Shields. Yeah, so Excel Shield's pretty good. That's another jump gun. That's the eagle gun. So, yeah, you've got some decent options here for your party members. The cannons are good for mechs more than people usually because gun techniques I don't think work with the cannons. Um... Never hurts to have them on hand, though. Anyway, I know this is a little bit boring. Trust me, this is... I'm going to sit through this, but you guys won't have too much longer. I'll let you guys know when I'm completely done with that, now that I've seen you the sword. Oh. Oh. What's going on here? Did it actually... Yes, okay. Sorry, my, uh... <laughs> my recording was doing some strange things. I wasn't meant to make sure it's going through. 
Alright, slow down the game. And we've done our, our uh, quote-unquote grinding here. <coughs> so we have 80 high-frequency swords. And we have 39 ceramics, just in case. Um, we are going to go ahead and equip loot with one of these. In fact, we're probably going to actually equip him with two of these. Um, because they are really good swords. Oh, actually, you know what? I should equip him one with... Oh, no, wait. He's actually going to be hand-to-hand. -hand. I don't know what I'm doing. You take those off. Actually, you hold on to them for someone else, though. Just in case. Um, now we're going to get a little bit of armor here. So, we come here. If I can find it. Where was the spot for it? Oh, I hate this. Oh, wait, I didn't do the... Wah, wah. Actually, didn't do the trick again after I got my last batch there. Alright, junk armor, and we're going to get a bunk of armor. No. Okay, come on now. Really, game? There's what I'm looking for. Cyber suits. Uh, so we're going to get a couple of cyber suits here and there. So, cyber suits are very powerful. Um, but to equip the, any of the suits, you have to take off the normal armor. See, so jumpsuit and cyber suit. The cyber suit is ridiculous. Um, you can only equip one suit, uh, which covers head, body, arms and legs, I believe. It's like a whole thing. Yeah, see, it, it replaces the fiber vest, it replaces the leather glove, and it also replaces the boots. Uh, cyber suit is just really, really good. Now, <coughs> I think, I think I'm still gonna want the cyber suit on him as well. <coughs> I may change my mind on that. And we're probably going to want one for, well, I say one asterisk for our robot buddy too. But robots work differently. So we're actually going to get uh, one more full set here. Let me speed it back up again. Okay, we've got a couple. I, I would like to have a, a spare. Yeah, there we go. Just in case. And two spare. That works. So, because robots actually work differently. Him to get that, and we can actually equip multiples of the same thing. Uh, yeah, that way he's a little bit more buff. And for the sake of argument, he's actually going to hold on to one of these as well. So now he has a means of fighting without the bazooka. Yeah. And that'll keep him going for a bit. Now we need to get a gun for Mei Ling. And the best gun for that is going to be up here in this section. Well, the best gun that we can get from the junk shop, put it that way. I think that was it. Because it used to be just to be called Lethal Gun, and I think it's now Lethal, Dr Lethal Dragoon. Yeah. Um, we do want a second gun on her, and the evil gun we got earlier will suffice as a secondary gun. Um, its attack power doesn't matter as much to me. This, do I have anything here? Any, oh yeah, shields. So yeah, shields are good. <coughs> I think the XL shield is actually the best shield you can get. And shields are good even as a magic user, so... Let's actually equip all of my humans with shields. Like I said, he's just holding on to the swords for later. He's probably going to have them turned off in a minute. But, yeah. Look at all his resistance because he's uh, on a machine. Alright, so... That actually should be all we need. Um, so let's go. Now that we've left, we will have to pay him again to get back in there. And so we don't have to pay to leave. Let's pop out the region map. And we're going to start the second money-making trick. So that's number one. You really want to use that to build up the money that you need. Um, of course, granted, I haven't done the actual money-making part, and that's why we're going to Shrike. But so we go to Shrike. And we went here before to uh, Nakajima Robotics. 
There's a vendor here who buys back swords. He sells stuff. That's not who I want to talk to. You buy back these items. He buys these swords. And for 110 apiece, a high frequency sonic enhanced sword. And we can end up with quite a chunk of change. That's why I gave two over to, um, to loot for him to hold on to. So we're going to get rid of most of these. I'm still going to keep one katana for the sake of having an actual katana enabled one. But we're going to sell the rest of these. I like the descriptions of these weapons. That's, that's nice. There was no description in the original. You only saw this menu with the tiny little thing down there. And yeah, I like the full-on description that they have for these now. You know, standard issue is single target. Specifies that the weapons are single target. Like, nice. Anyway, 16,000. No, I don't want to talk to you yet. 16,000 credits is nice. So we're actually going to use the ship just so I can keep uh, track of where I'm going. And we're going to go to Kurong. Now, we actually need to get back on the ship, and we're going to go to Almi. I had to think about that for a moment. Oh, and I'm pretty sure the high frequency sword what is what replaced the OSC, because I want to say OSC was short for oscillating. Now, Almi is a nice little cute little port town. You know, I'll step out here. See? It's a nice little port town. Um has some interesting NPCs, some uh, there's an inn there, I'm glad to know that's an inn now. Um, so yeah, you have places you can, th places you can go, things you can do, really not that much is blue, but there's definitely some importance to that for other people. Now, this place can only go to Kurong or Nelson, and we want to go to Nelson. And the reason it goes to Nelson is because Nelson's actually on its, uh, in its world, it's across the ocean. This is the other port town, Nelson. <coughs> this area has a lot less significance for the most part, but is home to this little, like, shady little bar place, and this guy sells gold. Gold ingots. Of course, we can buy, you know, 33 gold ingots. It's not a bad price, right? So, I hope this works, because if it doesn't work, I'm going to be, oof, I am going to be out of a lot of money, and a lot of time, but when you go th go back to the port in Nelson, it just immediately kicks you to Alamy, because there's no other place they can go. It does not have a spaceport, or whatever they want to call it, to go to Kurong, so now we go back to Kurong. Of course, this is what you do on any other character who's not blue. As blue, you just pull out the region map once you've done the first trip to Nelson. Just pull out the region map and teleport to Nelson. Anyway, this first little building right here, that's the, the yin symbol above its door. It's because this place also trades in gold. Um, but it's, it's a thing is a little, see how the price is so exorbitant? Um, but if I select it, oh, you know what? I wonder, oh, it does affect us still, okay. So, as you sell, its price varies. Now, I don't know if this is actually going to work. Alright. It might. So, let me see here. I want to knock its value down to 500. All right. I don't know if this is going to translate well. I'm actually going to, because even without it, that's still not a bad chunk of change. I'm going to do a quick save here. Um, so, now let's bring out our region map and teleport back to Almi. And we'll see if this glitch, again, I'm assuming it's a glitch, translates over like the other one did. Is that Almy? Okay, that's Almy. I don't want to actually teleport to Almy. I want to teleport to Nelson. Where's Nelson? Oh, there's Nelson.
I don't know why. I teleport up there of all places, but okay. Alright. Just because the way the interface is different, it's got me a little weirded out. Now, I can only hold 50, it looks like. Okay, so 50 is the max. That is different, because that used to not be the case. So it makes me wonder if they fixed it in a different way. Which is hence the, the quick save. Um, let's test this out together. Back to Kurong. And we come up here. Alright, so we try to sell gold again. Oh! This price went back up. Oh! It was intentional. Just not how it was intentional. So used to, it was buggy as all heck. What you would have to do is, see how the price goes down, right? So the price would remain. It wasn't based on how much gold you had, it was based on how much uh, the price was. The price stayed like, so if I left it at 480, it would stay at 480 when I came back and I would have to pretend to sell, you know, move it down till it was past zero all the way to the point where I had all of my gold up for offer and then back it back up to max back out the price, like that. But I see what they did there. Clever. It is an intentional thing. It's based on the gold you have on you, not on the price of the store, and I like that. It, the trick still works without it being broken and buggy. Okay, we can go with that. So that's the trick, that trick. That's the money-making trick. You only need at least 10,000 to get it to get it started. I recommend keeping more than 10,000. Um, like anytime you get down 20,000. So that's a couple little, not really a battle-oriented uh, gameplay on this one, but we're gonna do a little bit of kind of exploration here. And okay, that's selling leather and fur. We really don't want to do that. What do you do? We'll buy some fine shoes. Jet boots are not bad. Uh, protects against earthquakes. That's actually not bad to have on hand. See, the wearer floats a short distance above uh, above ground, rendering them immune to knockback attacks and increases the mobility. It also it makes you immune to earthquake abilities, and having a few of these on hand is never a bad thing. In fact, I'm going. I can't equip them on uh, loot or the any of my humans, but I will take off one of these junk parts uh, and equip it on my boy here because I don't want him getting hit by earthquakes and now also because his HP and defense are going to be higher than everyone else's we're going to put him in front Maylene goes in the back okay here we go because Maylene just isn't getting that much HP um, then again I'm using uh, guns and guns don't get much HP unless of course you get hit but yeah that's a whole other kind of worms um Increases accuracy. Mirror glass. Mirror glass doesn't really have a special effect, I don't think. Let me see. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, it does have a, you know, minor defense increase. Cyber glove is not as good as the cyber gear. See, powered gear, powered suit is really good if you don't use the money trick. Um, I don't think it's as good as C50. I don't think it's as good as the cyber suit. I know it is better than the cyber suit. Oh. Hold up. Okay, so. One, two, three, four, five. Five, maybe? I mean, if it's gonna be that powerful, I mean, why not, right? Really need to be able to sort these things. That works. No wait. Attack. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Um. Defense. Oh yeah. The cyber suit gives you other stats, but this is definitely better for 
my melee characters. And probably better for the other characters too, because even though they, they can get those buffs from other items like uh, accessories. And of course it's definitely going to be better for my boy here, because yeah, that's a lot better. All right. Give us all some uh, more better defensive items there. And I don't think it's this way that I need to... Oh, no, it is. Yeah, so you can buy the Lethal Dragoons, but we already have one, so I'm not going to worry about that. And over here... Yeah, there's the high-frequency swords, but you can also get Null Blades here, which are definitely better. Um, you know, it's 30 versus 60. <laughs> um, and a katana is better than the samurai sword. So, we'll be eventually getting a null blade or a couple of null blades. Or maybe at least one null blade, maybe just a one and one with the katana. But not right now. Um, I think that's about all we need to do with these uh, defense buffs. I'm gonna have to be careful as far as my. Robot Boy goes, because Robot Boy is going to cause the enemies to get pretty high in uh, power thanks to his HP, unless of course they change how that works. Uh, this guy does sell uh, some healing items, would never hurt to keep a few on hand. So just as long as you keep like 20,000 or so, you should be okay. I don't ever really use snake oils, but... And Magi, Magi Water and Magi Font are going to be very important for SS 50 JP, 200 JP. That's not as important right now, but it will be important later. Anyway. I realize that all I've done this, this episode has basically been showing off uh, what we're going to be going through probably with every every character um but yeah that's that's how we're gonna do that is to get money now that we got a source of money we can purchase what we need to um oh yeah he also has hide behind um so we don't need hide behind dark sphere is not the spell i want from dark or shadow but it is the most powerful single target spell it has. I want Shadow for a different spell though. There is another spell that I've yet to learn that I'm trying to learn that. I'm also trying to learn a spell with well, realm magic. Oh, actually something I want to show off because this is really awesome. Uh, the naming convention for the types of magic. Uh, let me see, where is it? Is it in... Uh, no. It is not race. Attributes... No, battle stages. Yes, here. So, realm magic and mystic magic. E every magic has an opposing force. You see the icon there. Realm is the eyeball. Mystic is the uh, dark symbol next to it. Then, of course, you have shadow and light, uh, mind and evil, time and space, and then arcane and runic. So, we won't be messing with mind and evil because that's a whole other thing kept separately. Uh, but Realm and Mystic are, uh, interesting choices there. Um, <laughs> type of magic brewed up in the, the Magic Kingdom. Realm magic concerns itself with supernatural phenomena and deal in psionic powers. That's an interesting description. But anyway, those two are called Eldric. That's the kind of the names of the families is what, what caught my interest. Eldric is Realm and Mystic. Optical is Shadow and Light, which is, I think is pretty cool. Ephemeral is Mind and Evil. Uh, dimensional is Time and Space. And Invocational is Arcane and Rune. I really like the way they did that. I will say, I, I read through the help list just to find out, glean any extra information. And they really went all out on trying to make the game easier to understand, because the original game wasn't. Most of what you figured out was either from reading guides or, you know, brute forcing it. But until next time, when we come back, we'll probably be ready to start our hunt for the runic magic. Uh, so, 
out of our runes that we have to find, um, we're gonna ignore the arcane because I don't care about the cards. Card magic is good, but not what I'm looking for at the moment. We'll do card magic onto the character. Uh, we'll probably start with the victory rune, just uh, over in Shrike where I've been grinding. Um, go to Moo's tomb, and there we have it. And we can get the hide rune as well, but I I want to save the hide rune for later. Hide is probably best as the third rune when you get, just because of its situation. But until next time, folks, we hope to see you again. Later.